น้องดีแน่ก็เพียวงงานทีบอกช่องทางลมบอกเหตุลบคือเหตุลมจบช่องแฟน
guns. Taylor Grilt quickly ran out of ammunition. They landed at Wheeler Field near the center of the island. Refueled, reloaded with 30 and 50 caliber ammunition and took off to fight the Japanese again. that the attack was deliberately planned many days or even weeks ago. The attack yesterday on the Hawaiian Islands has caused severe damage to American naval and military forces. No matter how long it may take us to overcome this premeditated invasion, the American people in their righteous might will win through to absolute victory. In the 44 months of fighting that followed, the United States sank every one of the Japanese aircraft carriers, battleships, and cruisers of the Pearl Harbor Task Force. It will not surprise you to know that he also owns three Ford Mustangs, including a 1969 version of a Steen Skybolt biplane. He hopes to be doing aerobatic routines. Craig Hutain and the beautifully restored five star general. This is about the most comfortable vehicle we have out here, and you're the one with the heater, so on a cold morning like it, this one here is set up as a medic jeep, you'll notice an apparatus on the hood that is used to attach stretchers. So if there's injured soldiers on a stretcher, you can hook them on there and take them back to the aid station. He's got it kitted out with all the rest of the aid equipment and a bicycle on the back that's an original World War II bicycle. Those are actually pretty hard to find. Next vehicle that's coming up here is a gun truck, one of the first couple ones we have here. So this particular gun truck has a 30 caliber machine gun mounted on it. This next Jeep here is a 50 caliber on the back, so a little higher caliber of, of weapon. Machine gun mounted on it. Um, all of the Jeeps have the platform in the base for attaching a pintle and a mount for a machine gun like that. 
This next Jeep here is a 50 caliber on the back, so a little higher caliber of, of weapon. So, but same thing, another weapon truck. A lot of Jeeps are actually manufactured right here in Dallas. Uh, next Jeep here is another, this one here has an antenna on the back, so this one would have been fit with a radio so that it could communicate. And we got another gun truck, this one here has a 30 caliber on the back, so. And you'll see he's got it kitted out. Pat's Jeep is a great one to come. Next Jeep is not armored. It's got the hood or the canvas up. So they don't have hard tops at all. So what they had was a canvas piece that would stretch from the back up over to transport troops and weapons, as well as towing um, uh, equipment in a trailer. So you'll see he's got the windshield down, which was the primary off of a two and a half ton deuce and a half. And it has a large engine. And if you look at the back of the truck, it has a huge tank. That's a compression truck. So that huge tank on the back is an air compressor. So that entire truck has a bunch of tools that are used by an engineering battalion to clear roads, uh, build airfields, whatever you need to do. It's got a two-man chainsaw, circular saws, jackhammers. After the Leroy compressor truck, we've got a crash truck. A lot of people mistake this one for a fire truck, but it's not a fire truck. It's actually specially uh, built to service planes that have crashed. All of the apparatus were specially him a ride in that truck, and he told us he never thought he'd see one again, much less get to ride in one. So we were happy to give him that opportunity. Next up, we have a pair of M3 with a 50 caliber and two 30 calibers. Those guns can slide around those skate rails to point any way they, where they want. So they found the Scout Cars vehicle is one that we're happy to have this year. It's an M8 Greyhound. So this is another reconnaissance vehicle that has light armor and a 37 millimeter cannon on the top of it. It's one of the fastest vehicles we have out here. It's another one of those reconnaissance vehicles, find the enemy. That 37 millimeter cannon wasn't really enough to pack too much of a punch for them though. So they would typically find the enemy with one of those and then they'd send in the bigger artillery or the bigger cannons. And that includes what's coming next, which is an M50 Super Sherman. So this Sherman tank left the Detroit factory in 1942 as an M4A4 Sherman with a 75 millimeter cannon. It was used by the British during the war before they transferred it to the French army. In the 50s, the French army sold it to the Israelis and the Israelis converted this Sherman from the M4A4 configuration to the current M50 Super Sherman configuration. They took the 75 millimeter cannon off the front and put a 7550 cannon on it. To counteract the length and the weight of that barrel, you'll notice there's a duckbill on the back of the turret, which acts as a counterweight to the to the tank. They added a bigger engine in it, diesel powered, and used it in the Yom Kippur and the Six Days War. We do want to thank the Kavanaugh Museum. They provided both of the tanks and several of the other vehicles here. So if you get a chance to see the collection, so. Uh, the last vehicle we have coming up here is a one and a half ton Chevy from 1942. So the one and a half tons were primarily used for towing artillery. So I'm going to talk about it's the half track that's sitting out there. This is the one that I drove up here. Uh, that's a very unique half track. They only made about 3,400 of those during the war. It's an M9A1 International Harvester half track. We've got another half track in the camp over there, which is an M2A1 half track. And them to make some as well. What differentiated the International Harvester from the other manufacturers is they used a rolled steel method, a rolled steel. Yeah. That's 16, 16 million men wore a uniform between 1940 and 1946. So just one of them, but six million volunteers, so nothing unusual about me. That's the one that you know, came through that scale. We honor a time when our nation was strong and united. In the three and a half years after this attack, United States of America put 16 billion men in uniform, built 100,000 fighter aircraft, 98,000 bombers, 24,000 transport planes, 58,000 trainers, 22 aircraft carriers, over a thousand other floating ships, from battleships to submarines and countless thousands of ground vehicles. Our dedication led to the surrender of not only the Japanese, but Nazi Germany as well, and freedom for the entire world. We do this in appreciation of that dedication, determination, and effort, and extend our appreciation to the men and women fighting for our freedom today. We salute them all, past and present.
United States Armed Forces, past, present, and future.